Now, the first Israeli has died from a rocket fired from Gaza. The news came after Israel had resumed airstrikes on Gaza, blaming Hamas for not agreeing to a peace deal. More than 190 people, the majority civilians, have been killed by Israeli airstrikes on Gaza since the offensive began. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, joins us now from Gaza. Jonathan. Yes, well, Krish, the first Israeli to be killed in this conflict died this evening of shrapnel wounds inflicted by a Palestinian militant rocket up near the Erez crossing between uh, Gaza and Israel. And his is the first Israeli death in a conflict which has cost more than or nearly 200 Palestinian lives here in Gaza. Most of those were civilians. And his death comes on a day when, for a few brief hours, those Israeli guns felt, fell silent. There were some hopes, albeit rather slim, of this proposed ceasefire, but they fell flat. Basically, although Israel accepted the terms, Hamas did not. Hamas is furious. They say their leaders weren't even consulted. They say that it was proposed by Egypt, which hates Hamas. Basically, Hamas is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas wants concessions. They want to see an end to this devastating seven-year siege of Gaza. They want to see some of their prisoners freed from Israeli jails. And to have a ceasefire without concessions would, in their view, be tantamount to submission. And that's a view that was pretty widely reflected amongst people I spoke to around Gaza today, a sense that although they're desperate for peace, not a peace on Israeli terms. They know that if they don't get concessions, they'll ultimately just face another conflict somewhere further down the line. So both sides here locked in an ever more vicious circle. Sudden and violent death brings with it a terrible depth of distress. The honor of martyrdom, cold comfort for a family in Rafa, one a four-year-old girl called Zaha. This the result of one of 130 overnight airstrikes. Gaza awoke to news of a possible ceasefire that was doomed to die a violent, sudden death too. Israel has hit 1,500 of what it calls terrorist targets in Gaza over the past week. These have now killed nearly 200 people and wounded 1,400. Just before 9 a.m., Israel announced that it would accept a ceasefire proposal brokered in Cairo, but not before it had struck a final few targets. At 5.30 this morning, an Israeli drone fired two rockets into this building. Those were the warning shots. Then an F-16 came in with a missile. Incredibly, no one was killed. These blocks of flats around here were built with foreign aid to house those who'd lost their homes in past wars. We were up in Bet Lahir, a bit of a militant hotspot in the north of the Gaza Strip. While we were here, we witnessed four rockets being fired into Israel. Hamas spokesmen hang out at the Shifa hospital where they reckon they're unlikely to suffer sudden violent death. We reject any ceasefire before the resistance negotiates the conditions. We will not stop fighting before they accept all the conditions of the Palestinian resistance. Israel's announcement is one-sided and has no value. How long can you keep going for? How long will you fight for? Because people are dying, children. To us, those killed are martyrs. Hamas is not responsible for their deaths. Israel should stop its aggression. We are fighting to protect our civilians. And so Hamas and other militant factions kept on firing volleys of rockets into Israel all day. This is Ashdod, 25 miles north of Gaza. Tonight, they're targeting Tel Aviv. Several have been intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. If Hamas rejects the Egyptian proposal, and the rocket fire from Gaza does not cease, and that appears to be the case now, we are prepared to continue and intensify our operation to protect our people. We wanted to find out what ordinary people in Gaza felt, so we went to a UN-run school, now a refuge for evacuees from the bombing. We hate war, said Tahani, a mother of seven, but we want real peace, that or war forever. This is the third time she's had to flee. This isn't a life, said Fatia, her mother-in-law. Our children live in terror. 
but we need our sons to be freed from Israeli jails. 3.30 p.m. and no resumption of Israeli airstrikes so far. But Gaza City's a ghost town, people cowering in their homes, waiting. This is the tomb of the unknown soldier killed in some past war against Israel. Today is the day that high school students in Gaza get their exam results. And normally this square would be packed full of happy celebrating students. Not so today though. The only noise you can hear is that of an Israeli drone somewhere up there. The Israeli drone strikes resumed exactly 20 minutes later. And since then, the barrage has been pretty intense, incoming and outgoing. Tonight, news of the first Israeli death Neither side wants a prolonged conflict, but any vain hopes that this might have ended today have been summarily shattered. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Gaza City.